everyone, this is Ron from My Tech Legion, and this is part of our review of the MSI GK601 Mechanical Gaming Keyboard Review, and we're going to take a look at the GK Series Gaming Keyboard software that is included with this keyboard. It is actually on a disc that is inside the pack itself. It's not, uh, it's not made available only for download as with... Uh, the common practice now with most of the gaming peripherals. So that's uh, very nice that MSI has included that so you can install it offline. Now, first things first, obviously it follows the same, uh, has a view of the, uh, the keyboard itself there, which follows the same color scheme, essentially. Uh, very easy to uh, to see what's going on, although the layout itself and the functionality is not as intuitive as I would have liked and as I've seen with other keyboards now. Thankfully, there is a a help button here which uh, will open up this HTML file. You probably can't see it because I cropped my screen there for capturing. You can see essentially a uh, explanation of the uh, functionality there just in case you are lost. So that's a basic step essentially there to keep you going. Other than that, let me that the point of this video of course is to demonstrate to you how to use this functionality. Now, you have a layout of the soft of the keyboard there, all 104 keys, and you have the profile on the selection on the top. See each one. Now, selecting the profile here on top is not the same as setting the profile on the keyboard itself. For example, if I switch the keyboard uh, here, um, F2, you can see that my uh, popped up right there in the corner that I was in profile two, and I switched to profile two, but the profile did not change here on the main software. I would have liked a uh, tighter integration as with other macro recording software or other peripheral software if the uh, tab here switched automatically profile two when I switched it up with my keyboard. Just makes everything a lot simpler and easier. Now, I don't have any stored here. By default, you can see that nothing is stored there. Uh, now, obviously, unlike other gaming keyboards that have additional buttons for setting the macros, the macros that GK Series Gaming Keyboard use are essentially things that you assign to it. So that's uh, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on the user. Now, obviously, you will lose functionality on that key. And in fact, one of the options here is for you to disable a key entirely. I'll go through that with you. And uh, you can see that here on my profile, but profile one, I have assigned the escape key as a macro functionality. And to record a macro, let me just go through here. Just click on the uh, macro you want to assign to. For example, you have up to 10 macros per profile. So let me click on M2 here. You can see that it's going gonna, it's gonna to start flashing. That means I could click on any key here, except of course a certain certain keys. For example, the um, F6 or F7 through F11 and F12 are not selectable. That is because F7 to F11 is essentially the profile switching uh, keys, and F12 is the gaming mode and PC mode switch. But you can assign scroll lock, pause break, pretty much everything else. Also, except for the function key, of course, since you need that. And the um, context key you can also assign, but uh, the Windows key and the function key are not assignable with ex as well as the F7 to F12. But pretty much everything is fair game. So let me just click on this tilde key here since I, I don't often use that. And you can see that it's still blinking. And from there, this option becomes available, a drop down uh, button there. So let me just move this upward so you can see it further. You have some presets other than macro. Obviously you have none, which is default. Macro, cut, copy, paste, undo, which is control X, control V, of course, uh, all the familiar Windows short shortcuts you're uh, used to it by now. Select all, find, control F, new, control N, print, control P, save, control S, launch a program, which will open a, um, the Windows Explorer allows you to browse an exe file that you want to ex execute, or you can disable that key completely so you don't accidentally press it while you're gaming. For example, if if it's a type of uh, something that uh, is as disruptive as the Windows key typically, so uh, 
let's go back here to the macro function, which is what most people will probably be interested in. So let me click on macro here. And it pops up this window where you can record functions. And you can see there's also a delay button there. Obviously, before you start typing and recording the macro, you have to hit the record button first. And this only records the the key presses on the keyboard itself. It won't record your mouse input. And you can hit record there. And let me just type, see there? And then hit stop. And we'll add one more uh, entry here in the end with a zero delay. You can see that it times your input. Uh, if you're a fast typer, of course, you can, uh, it records that and see that uh, it even it records a zero millisecond there for one of my inputs, several of my inputs. But I'm surprised because I thought that it would in, input a 25 millisecond delay for each one here. And it didn't exactly do that. So I don't know what's going on. I guess I had to, ch you can change that manually to 25 milliseconds, but there's no way to kind of, uh, just uh, if it did less than 25 milliseconds so it has to be less than 25 milliseconds for me to change that although it actually uh let me see if i allow you to do zero no it won't let me allow you it won't allow me to change that to anything although it actually records some of it as zero so that's confusing on on my end uh, well, i'm just gonna fetch the 25 and essentially uh, let's see what the highest you can input it as. So let me just change that to 999 and hit delay. And you can see that I can indeed set to 999 milliseconds. Of course, that would be cruel. So uh, for the purpose of this, let me just set it to something different. So 50 milliseconds delay and much everything there. Once that's done, at the bottom, you have repeat, load, save, OK. Load allows you to load an external file. Save, of course, allows you to save to add an external file. It's a macro file that you can save maybe on your computer or to a USB disk so you can take it with you. You can also hit repeat and you can see the options here. You can repeat one time, repeat while key is pressed, or repeat until key the next key is pressed. So repeat one time is a default. Click yes, hit OK and it will ask you to want to save this macro. Now, we'll go. another thing that's confusing me is the background here, since they're all the same, so I don't know which one is on top of which. Uh, I would have liked it maybe a little bit different color there, maybe a darker color or a lighter color, depending on which one is in the forefront. It's just a little bit visually confusing, uh, just in my opinion. Let me just hit yes there, and it's still blinking, so what you want to do is hit apply. Press profile, save yes, of course, if I hit no. Uh, I mean, I'm just, I just hit no because I wanted to show you something. If you hit OK instead, they do the same thing. But the difference is that if you hit OK, it will minimize the program automatically out of the way into the uh, into the taskbar here. But if you click, uh, if you just click Apply, it will remain on top, so you can continue on and going through saving uh, multiple um, macros, and you also can go through again five profiles you can import export these are external files you can save here config file and import you can take it with you and if you want to have a smaller profile there but then of course you won't be able to click on what you need and uh, just to test it out I have a notepad open here see my macro assignments I of course I assigned make sure that I am profile one again so I'm gonna hit control uh, uh, rather function key and F1 you can see the pop up there for profile one and I'm going to hit uh, my tilde key right, it's typing we want it to type so you can interrupt it actually it uh, if you uh, if you're fast enough can interrupt but it's still, it will still continue on after you release that button and same thing with my uh, previous uh, you said there and basically you can assign it different functions uh, this is just a quick demo there for G notepad but essentially if you're a gamer of course you can bind a certain movement and if you're a RTS gamer you can have multiple compound moves and even uh, fighting games you can execute combos efficiently you can do it that way much more effectively and also for applications where uh, use multiple key presses shortcuts maybe uh, just assign it into one button that you don't really need for example uh, the arrow keys I don't necessarily need those so 
that will come in handy if I can reassign that to a different macro. Very, very useful. Although, again, um, just a few more issues with the software that I would have liked them to maybe work out later on that uh, the, uh, the delay function, for example, I would have liked more robust uh, adjustments of that. But other than that, it's a very solid uh, macro recording functionality for a keyboard. And if you would like to read the rest of the review or actually watch the video overview of this keyboard, you can just click on the description you can find the a link to hightechlegion.com where I read, uh, rather, I write the entire review there. And also you can watch the overview video of this software. So this is Ron for High Tech Legion. And once again, thanks for watching and hit subscribe for daily updates. You can keep up to date with all our activities here at hightechlegion.com. And thanks for watching and see you next time.